live interview with the leading actress. In a spontaneous segment, the host asks the leading actress to make a phone call to the person she regrets the most in her life. My phone started ringing. She asked me, why did you leave me all those years ago? Just because I was poor? I looked at my emaciated arms and smiled faintly, saying, Gil, can you lend me a hundred thousand dollars? The phone was abruptly hung up. She said in the live broadcast, there are no regrets now, only gratitude. In that moment, I laughed with a sense of liberation. Chapter 1 Gil was invited for her first live interview as the reigning best actress. Accompanying her was Ivan, the male lead of her award-winning film. The live stream was filled with a massive audience. The host asked Gil and Ivan numerous questions, and finally, with a mysterious tone, said, Now we have an impromptu segment where we need Gil and Ivan's cooperation. No problem, replied Gil, gracefully and politely. We need you to make a live call to the person you regret the most in your life and share your deepest regret, exclaimed the excited host. Gil fell silent for a while. The barrage of comments in the live chat became frenzied. I wonder who the person Gil regrets the most is and what her deepest regret could be. So excited. It can't be about love, right? Someone as beautiful as Gil, anyone who leaves her would regret it for a lifetime. I heard that Gil was genuinely hurt by love before, and I also heard that she entered the entertainment industry because of that person. Gil? The host couldn't help but remind her. Gil snapped back to reality and smiled, saying, okay. Then she took out her phone and started dialing. I never expected her to call me. It's been five years since Gil and I broke up. During this time, there has been no contact whatsoever. I even doubted if she had deleted my phone number. When I received the call, my emotions were complex. In the end, I answered. After the call connected, there was a long silence from Gil. And from me as well. It felt like we had both fallen into a century-long silence. The barrage of comments in the live chat became more impatient. I'm so nervous. Who could make Gil stay silent for so long? I can see her hand holding the phone, her knuckles turning white from the force. Who is the other person? This suspense is killing me. My heart can't take it. Was it the person who hurt Gil? Ah, I'm so impatient. Just when I thought Gil might hang up directly, she asked me in a low, deep voice, why did you leave me all those years ago? Just because I was poor? As soon as she spoke, the live chat exploded. OMG. Our beloved actress was actually abandoned. Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who could be so blind to leave the actress? They must be regretting it so much now. Gil should never forgive them, absolutely not. I looked at my emaciated arms and smiled faintly, saying, Gil, can you lend me a hundred thousand dollars? Chapter 2. Gil smiled during the live broadcast. Her smile remained as beautiful and captivating as ever. But her smile also evoked a sense of heartache. Fans in the live chat tried to console her. Don't smile, he doesn't deserve it. Gil, you are perfect in our eyes. He doesn't know how to cherish you, it's his loss. Who is this man? I want to find out who made our dear Gil so heartbroken. Gil hung up the phone. Her expression quickly returned to calm. She indifferently said to the host, I have no regrets now, only gratitude. The host quickly agreed, life is a process of filtering, some people are not worth it, no need to linger. The barrage in the live chat supported the host's words. Occasionally, there were one or two comments cursing me. Now, it's Ivan's turn, the host enthusiastically said to Ivan. Okay, Ivan replied with a smile. He took out his phone and dialed a number without hesitation. The phone rang in the live broadcast room. It wasn't until Gil picked up the phone that everyone realized Ivan was calling her. Gil looked at Ivan. Ivan smiled, gesturing for her to answer the call. The live chat went crazy. Ah, is my ship about to sail? Don't disappoint me, Gil and Ivan are a perfect match. I love this couple so much. I love Ivan's courageous personality. Gil slowly answered the call. Gil, I've been waiting for you for so many years. From high school to university, to the entertainment industry. From being an extra to becoming a best actress. From your love for him until now, Ivan's eyes were red, and now, you've let go of him. Can you accept me? His voice carried humility and sincerity. All the fans in the live chat were cheering. Accept Ivan, Gil, please accept him. Ivan has been with Gil for so many years. It's unbearable for them not to be together. 
Gil, accept Ivan and forget that heartless man. Gil remained silent for a while. Ivan's eyes were filled with tears, shimmering in the light. Okay, Gil agreed. In that moment of acceptance, Ivan was overwhelmed with joy, and his tears seemed even more apparent. Congratulations filled the live chat. A relieved smile formed on my lips. But after the live broadcast ended, my phone suddenly received a notification of a deposit of 100,000 yuan. Chapter 3 I never thought that Gil would actually give me money. But I accepted the money. I am indeed in need of money. For Gil, perhaps she just wanted to put a satisfactory end to her so-called regrets. I never thought I would see Gil again. If it weren't for her coming to the hospital to shoot a TV drama. I was lying in bed, and I heard the excited voice of a fellow patient next to me, Oh my god, is that really Gil? Gil is actually filming at the hospital? I'm so excited. I really want to go down and ask for her autograph. I wonder if she would find me repulsive? Gil is even more beautiful in person than on TV. The patient leaned over the window, talking incessantly. Stan, come over and take a look, she's super handsome. In the end, I couldn't help but enjoying the patient, leaning on the windowsill together. There were many people below. But at a glance, I could see Gil shining like a star. She was sitting on a nearby chair, waiting for her scene. Ivan was next to her, laughing and talking with her. Wow, this couple is really good together. The patient had a smile on his face. Yes. They are truly a perfect match. Which man doesn't know how to cherish Gil and abandon her? What's even more despicable is that last time Gil called him, he was still thinking about getting money from her. How shameless. The patient complained indignantly. He definitely didn't know that Gil was doing a live broadcast at that time. Now that he knows, he must be regretting it. The patient kept on chattering. Suddenly, the patient became excited again. Ah, Gil is looking up here, she saw me. The patient was thrilled. And in that moment, I turned around abruptly. She probably didn't see me. Stan in bed 16, your discharge procedures have been completed. You can leave the hospital now. The nurse handed me the paperwork and said, after you go back, remember to come for regular follow-up appointments, once a month. If you feel unwell during that time, come to the hospital promptly. All right. I changed out of the hospital gown. The patient said with reluctance, you're leaving the hospital, I'm so envious. Don't envy me, you still have hope. As for me, I have no hope. I was diagnosed with terminal leukemia five years ago. I have no family left. And I haven't been able to find a suitable bone marrow for a transplant. I'll just leave it to fate. When I finished packing and left the hospital, I saw Gil again. She exerted all her strength to pull me into her car. She said, Stan, what are you doing here? I said I knew in advance that you were coming to the hospital to shoot, so I followed you. Do you believe me? I tried to make my smile appear natural. Gil was momentarily stunned, then her eyes filled with disgust. What are you doing here? I regret it. I looked at her pleadingly. Gil frowned, suppressing her anger. Do you need money? You caught me. I admitted frankly, last time you lent me a hundred thousand yuan, can you lend me a little more this time? On what basis? Gil repressed her fury. Or, can I accompany you for a few nights? Jill's expression visibly changed, and she gritted her teeth. Stan. You are truly disgusting. Chapter 4 Gil angrily left. As I watched her figure fade into the distance, my vision gradually blurred. Five years ago, perhaps it was a personal choice. But five years later, it truly became an inevitable circumstance. I got out of Jill's car and stood on the side of the road, waiting for Laura to pick me up. As soon as she arrived, she apologized repeatedly, I'm sorry, Stan, I'm late. The company has been a mess. While speaking, she helped me put my luggage in the trunk. I told you, I can go back on my own. How can that be? Your job is more important, Laura said earnestly. I wasn't too polite either and got into Laura's car. At the moment Laura drove away, her gaze paused. I think I just saw Gil. My heart skipped a beat. She's gone again. Laura frowned and muttered, this woman seems to be doing better and better. Yeah, I replied with a faint smile. Are you sure you don't want to give it another try with her? She has a boyfriend now. 
Laura took a deep breath and didn't say anything more. She knew everything between Gil and me. So there was no reason for her to advise me. When Laura dropped me off at home, I casually mentioned, let's go somewhere together when you're free. What place? A cemetery. I said indifferently. But Laura's eyes instantly turned red. She turned her head to the side. I've been working overtime during this period. Very busy. It might take some time. Okay, I smiled and agreed. I didn't expose her lie. After all, she had just said that my job was more important. She just couldn't face my death. At night, as I drifted off to sleep, the phone suddenly rang. Laura. I didn't look at the caller ID. At this late hour, the only person who could be calling me is her. To be precise, she is the only friend I have by my side. Waiting for her? Jill's voice came through, cold and indifferent. My heart skipped a beat. I never thought she would call me, let alone come to see me. I thought the words we exchanged today were hurtful enough. I'm on Nanyuan Road, I'm drunk, come pick me up. Gil. The call was abruptly disconnected. After hesitating for at least half an hour, I decided to take a taxi and go. It's now 2 a.m. the streets are empty. When I arrived, I didn't see a single person. Standing under the streetlight, I gazed at the crescent moon high in the lonely sky, unable to express the feelings inside me. Perhaps, it was mostly relief. I'm relieved that Gil is just seeking revenge on me. I'm relieved that she won't remember me anymore. Just as I was about to turn around and leave. Stan. Behind me, a soft and familiar voice sounded. I turned my head and saw her standing in the dark corner, like an abandoned woman. My heart ached unexpectedly. Almost in that instant, it brought back memories of five years ago when we broke up. On this same street, on a cold night just like this. She held me, begging me not to leave. With teary eyes, she said she would become famous, earn a lot of money, and we would have a good life together. Just give her a little more time, just a little more time. Back then, I was cold-blooded and cruel. I said, Gil, I've had enough. I've had enough of living in a cold basement, of eating instant noodles every day, of feeling like it's a feast to have a piece of meat. I've had enough of giving up my own life for your dreams. I'm tired, even if you become a big star, rich and successful, I will never regret the choice I made today. Gil stood at the intersection, watching as I got into Laura's car. Her lonely and broken figure haunted me countless times in my midnight dreams, causing tears to flow uncontrollably. Do you really regret it? She asked me. She asked if I truly regretted leaving her back then. Chapter 5 I looked at her bloodshot eyes. I couldn't tell if it was sadness or anger. I hadn't spoken yet. Gil suddenly covered my mouth with her hand. I looked at her in surprise. I don't want to hear a word from you, she said coldly. Then, she grabbed my hand and pulled me into her luxury car. I sat in the car, silent as the air. I didn't know what Gil was planning or where she was taking me. Don't you have any questions? Gil suddenly spoke, her voice cold, as she drove. I couldn't help but smile. Wasn't she the one who said she didn't want to hear a word from me? But I didn't mind. When facing death, you see everything clearly. I said, Gil, I never dared to dream that one day I would be sitting in such a luxurious car. Gil tightened her grip on the steering wheel, remained silent for a while, and then said coldly, you weren't meant for it. Yes. I truly wasn't meant for it. The car came to a stop. I looked at the unfamiliar garage, hesitating to get out. What, do you want me to open the car door for you? Gil mocked me. Gil. She forcefully opened the car door. Once again, she dragged me into the elevator, and then we went to her home. A luxurious penthouse, overlooking the entire city at night. I still remember that winter, when we huddled together for warmth in the basement. I was freezing, and I started to fantasize, I want a big house, a really big one, with 180 degree floor to ceiling windows where I can see the entire city at night. The heating in the house is perfect, even in the dead of winter, we can walk around naked. Now, Gil made it happen. I stood in the spacious living room, feeling awkward and unsure. Suddenly, Gil pulled me onto the couch and sat on my lap, embracing my neck. She said, Stan, this is what you wanted. No. I tried to push her away. But I couldn't bear to hurt her. Yet I really didn't want this. I didn't want to be like this with Gil. 
I didn't want to leave her world in such a pitiful way. The room was in chaos. Suddenly, Jill's phone rang. The urgent ringtone echoed in my ears. She finally answered the call. Gil, I have a fever, it's up to 40 degrees. Where are you? Can you come to my place and take me to the hospital? Ivan's weak voice came from the other end of the phone. I feel terrible. Gil, please come quickly. Gil got off me, put on her clothes, and left without even looking back. I lay pale-faced on the couch. The phone I had been gripping tightly, along with the recent call record to Ivan. I got dressed and tidied up the mess on the couch. It was only when I reached the door that I realized Gil had locked it from the outside, and I couldn't get out at all. I felt defeated. I didn't know how long it would take for Gil to come back. And I had no idea what she would do when she returned. Bored, I wandered around her house. I entered her bedroom. I sat at her desk and saw her diary. So, Gil also has the habit of writing in a diary. I hesitated for a long time. But eventually, I opened that diary. Chapter 6 January 12, 2018 Stan left, he left with Laura. Indeed, promises are just bullshit. February 12, 2018 Stan has been gone for a month. I gathered the courage to call him, but Laura answered. She said they were doing well together. She told me not to bother him anymore. Stan is such a good man, he shouldn't give up everything for my dreams. Laura is right. July 12, 2018 Stan has been gone for six months. I received a great script, playing the supporting role. It's the role I've always dreamed of having. But now that I finally have it, I don't seem as thrilled. I suppose it's because the person I wanted to share it with is no longer here. January 12, 2019 Stan has been gone for a year. This year, I've been immersed in my characters every day. It seems like only this way can I forget the disappointments of real life. May 27, 2019 Stan has been gone for 500 days. Today is his birthday. I wonder how he's doing? Did he marry Laura and have children? I wish them happiness. January 12, 2020 Stan has been gone for two years. Today, I came to Dali to film. Stan always said he wanted to come to Dali, to experience the four seasons of blooming flowers. He wanted to listen to the wind and rain by Eye Lake, to feed the pigeons under the blue sky. I want to tell Stan. Some sceneries are not as beautiful as imagined. March 15, 2020 Stan has been gone for two years, two months, and three days. During this time, I've been frequently taking on acting jobs, appearing in commercials, and being active on the screen. Will Stan see it? Will he regret it? But he said he would never regret it. October 18, 2020 Stan has been gone for two years, seven months, and six days. Today, while filming, a wire stunt went wrong and I fell from above. That was the closest I've ever felt to death. So, the first thing I did after waking up was to go find Stan. I wanted to tell him that I'm rich now, we don't have to sleep in the basement anymore, we don't have to eat instant noodles anymore. We can enjoy gourmet cuisine from all over the world. I won't make him give up his dreams anymore. He can do anything he wants. But when I actually saw Stan, I didn't have the courage to approach him. I saw him and Laura carrying bags and bags of groceries from the supermarket, happily chatting as they returned to Laura's place. I just stood there, less than 10 meters away from them. But he didn't notice me. April 3, 2021 Stan has been gone for 3 years, 2 months, and 22 days. Today, I went to buy a house. My agent suggested buying a villa, saying it offers more privacy. But in the end, I chose a spacious flat in the city center. Stan said he liked large flats with floor-to-ceiling windows, where he could enjoy the night view and even run around naked. In case Stan and Laura aren't doing well one day. He can just move here directly. June 18, 2021 Stan has been gone for three years, five months, and six days. My resources in the entertainment industry are getting better and better. In order to earn more money, I accept any script that comes my way, regardless of quality. My reputation is declining. Many people are criticizing me, and the impact of online violence is even greater than I imagined. I even fell into depression. During that time, a fan named Time Will Not Let You Down kept sending me private messages to encourage me. He has been my fan for many years, probably since my debut. But he wasn't as active before. 
In my memory, it seems that he would only send a message on my birthday, saying, Gil, happy birthday, live a long life. Because of the blessing of live a long life, I have a deep impression of him. After all, when someone becomes popular, I receive birthday wishes from many fans, and I can't remember every single one. During that lowest point in my life, he was there, constantly comforting me. He said everyone falls down at some point, but it's important to get back up. He said I'm the hardest working actress he's ever seen, and even if the scripts aren't good, he can see how dedicated I am to my roles. He said he can feel my passion for acting, and he even said that one day I will become a queen of the screen. He seems to know exactly what I want to hear. I have to admit, he really healed me. Chapter 7 August 15, 2021 Stan has been gone for three years, seven months, and three days. I accepted a literary film. My agent was angry because this film required me to shoot in the Northwest for eight months. This means I will lose many other roles and miss out on many opportunities. But I don't want to keep depleting my popularity like this. I want to settle down, my previous self was too restless. April 12, 2022 Stan has been gone for four years and two months. As expected by my agent, after shooting in the Northwest for eight months, my popularity took a nosedive. I felt disappointed. But I never regretted it. During those years of filming and attending events, I had almost no time for myself. Now, during this period of free time, I made travel plans. Actually, it wasn't necessary. Stan had mentioned many places he wanted to travel to before. He said he wanted to go to Disneyland and experience the dazzling fireworks from fairy tales. He wanted to go to Chiang Mai Mountain and enjoy the luxury of soaking in hot springs in the snowy landscape. He wanted to climb Mount Huashan and watch the sunrise and sunset from the peak. He wanted to go to Tibet, the closest place to the sky. He wanted to gallop on the grasslands of Inner Mongolia. But traveling alone feels a bit lonely. February 12, 2023 Stan has been gone for a whole five years. Once my literary film was released, it suddenly became a hit. My acting received professional recognition. I even won the Best Actress Award for this film. I became popular again. Very popular. I agreed to do a live interview. The host asked me to call the person I regretted the most in life. After five years, I gathered the courage to call Stan again. I asked him why he left me. Was it because I was poor? Actually, what I wanted to ask was, now that I'm rich, can you come back? He didn't answer me, instead, he asked to borrow a hundred thousand yuan from me. In that moment, my heart turned cold. It's not that I couldn't handle him asking me for money right away, but his calm and indifferent tone made me deeply feel that he is really far away from me. I hung up the phone directly. I think, I should have no regrets anymore. So, I agreed to Ivan's pursuit. Ivan has indeed been with me for many years, from high school until now, and even went to the Northwest for eight months of filming for me. I have no reason to reject him. After the live broadcast ended, I sat in the nanny car, and the staff congratulated me and Ivan for finally getting together after so many years. At that moment, I inexplicably sent a hundred thousand yuan to Stan. Consider it a lesson for myself. Chapter 8 The Diary Ends Here Tears uncontrollably stained her notebook. I carefully wiped it clean and put the diary back in its original place. That night, Gil didn't come back. I curled up on her couch and fell asleep. When I woke up, it was already bright outside. Gil had also returned. She was holding breakfast in her hands, saying, Come and eat. I got up and followed her. The breakfast was rich, with noodle tea, meat buns, tofu pudding, lamb offal soup, and baked pancakes. I suddenly remembered that when we were together, we had to be frugal even for a simple breakfast. The ingrained sense of thrift felt wasteful. So, I casually said, I can't finish it all. I didn't ask you to finish it, Gil said impatiently. I didn't say anything more. To Gil now, this was really not a significant amount of money. I sat at the dining table, leisurely eating. Gil sat across from me but didn't touch her chopsticks. Why aren't you eating? I asked her. I've already eaten, Gil replied. Did you eat with Ivan? I asked, smiling lightly. Gil remained silent. Actually, I shouldn't have said more. I shouldn't have overstepped. But sometimes, I really feel regretful, so regretful. 
I said, Gil, let's travel together. Gil looked up at me. A hint of surprise flashed in her eyes. We talked about going to Disneyland together, going to Chiang Mai Mountain together, going. Okay, Gil agreed without hesitation. I called Laura and told her that I would be gone for a while. Gil was right beside me. She had a sarcastic smile on her lips. Yes. I lied to Laura. I didn't tell her that I was going with Gil. I just said I was going back to my hometown to relax. Laura was very supportive and gave me a lot of instructions, down to the smallest details. Gil and I went to Chiang Mai Mountain as our first stop. I heard that there was still snow there. We checked into a hotel, changed into our swimsuits, and went to soak in the hot springs in the snowy landscape. I wrapped myself in a large bathrobe. Gil was already in the private hot spring pool. She laughed at me mockingly, saying, Why are you wrapping yourself up so tightly? It's not like I haven't seen it before. I wasn't embarrassed. I was just afraid that she would be scared if she saw my emaciated body. I hesitated but finally took off my bathrobe and entered the pool. I huddled in a corner. We were far apart from each other. Gil stared at me for a long time, then suddenly walked towards me. She grabbed my arm angrily, her eyes filled with anger. Is this how you've been living with Laura all these years? Isn't this skinny look popular now? Aren't your male celebrities in the entertainment industry like this? Ah. Gil suddenly bit my arm, causing me to cry out in pain involuntarily. She let go of my arm and said harshly, you look ugly. Then she angrily left the pool. I watched Jill's figure as she walked away. She has such a great figure. Fair, slender legs, a devilish figure, captivating and alluring. After Gil left, I soaked in the pool for a long time. After all, there won't be another chance for such a comfortable life. When I returned to the room after bathing, Gil had already arranged for dinner to be delivered. We sat by the floor-to-ceiling window, looking at the remnants of snow outside, eating a high-end steak. Eat more, Gil said with a commanding tone when she saw me put down my fork and knife. I'm full. Ever since I started chemotherapy, my appetite has been getting worse and worse. Sometimes, I can't even eat a small portion of food in a day. Today was already a struggle. Gil took my plate abruptly and cut the remaining half of my steak into many small pieces, then placed a small piece of meat near my mouth. Open up. Gil. Mmm. I opened my mouth, and Gil fed me the steak. Don't spit it out, eat it, Gil commanded again. She wasn't this domineering before. It's true, being a big celebrity changes everything. Chapter 9 I finished a whole steak. It's been years since I ate this much. After eating, my stomach felt uncomfortable. I wanted to vomit but didn't dare. I choked there, tossing and turning when I slept. Feeling uncomfortable? Gil, who was sleeping next to me, suddenly asked from behind. We were still sharing a bed. But. There was at least a three-person distance between us. Gil didn't do anything inappropriate to me proactively. That night was just an accident. Ate too much, I said uncomfortably. The next moment, Jill's body leaned over. Her warm hand touched my stomach, gently massaging it. I tightly pursed my lips, stiffening my body, not moving at all. I don't know how long I slept. I don't know how long Gil slept. We maintained this awkward position for the whole night. During our week in Chiang Mai Mountain, we went skiing, built snowmen, had snowball fights, and even went drifting. After that, we went to Wainan City and climbed Mount Hua. We watched the sunrise and sunset on Mount Hua, went to the west peak of Mount Hua, and hung locks. I bought a longevity lock. I saw Jill's expression change. She didn't buy anything, silently walking among all those locks, seemingly searching for something. Carefully, I hung up the longevity lock, filled with sincerity, because the name Gil was on it. After hanging it, I went to find Gil. Following Jill's gaze, I saw a pair of heart-shaped locks that read Gil and Stan. I didn't ask much. Gil didn't say much either. Leaving Mount Hua, we went straight to Inner Mongolia. We spent quite some time in Inner Mongolia. Personally, I wanted to stay a bit longer. I liked the vastness there, the blue sky and white clouds. I galloped on the grassland. I had never ridden a horse before, but it was my first time, and I didn't feel scared at all. Gil was chasing after me from behind. I faintly heard her telling me to slow down. Her voice carried panic. As expected, I fell off the horse. My nose was bleeding. It kept flowing and couldn't be stopped for a long time. Gil was at a loss, she wanted to take me to the hospital. 
I stubbornly refused. Going to the hospital would have exposed everything to her, wouldn't it? She scolded me, don't you want to live? No, I shook my head honestly. It's just that I don't have much time left. Are you afraid of me dying? I suddenly asked her. Gil coldly replied, it would be best if you died, so you wouldn't cause trouble for anyone. But after that day, Gil never took me horseback riding again. She just accompanied me for walks on the grassland. During those few days, I often heard her making late night phone calls. It was either from her manager or Ivan calling. I knew I was burdening Gil. Gil was on a roll now, and she should take advantage of this momentum to solidify her position in the entertainment industry. Instead of suddenly disappearing. It was me, being stubborn. Gil, let's go back, I suddenly spoke up. At that moment, she was sitting in front of the hotel computer, planning our trip to Tibet. The time spent in Tibet would be longer than in Inner Mongolia. So there would be more things to consider for the journey, and she was being very meticulous about it. She looked up at me. I said, Laura called to urge me to go back. I saw Gil smile. She laughed until tears were about to come out and said, Stan, am I really that fun? I remained silent. I fucking feel like a dog. Gil angrily smashed the computer to pieces and threw it harshly on the ground. Then she stormed out of the room. I saw the blood on the back of her hand, but I didn't have the courage to ask her to stay. The next day, I packed my bags, preparing to leave on my own. As soon as I opened the door, I saw Gil standing at the doorway. There was a moment that made me feel like she hadn't gone anywhere last night, that she was right here. My heart ached to the point of suffocation. But my face remained calm and indifferent. Go to Shanghai, Gil said. I stared at her blankly. I can't delay you for a few days, Gil said coldly, yet stubbornly. Chapter 10 I still went to Shanghai with Gil, and we went to Disneyland. Just as she said. It didn't delay us for more than a few days. We watched the fireworks, as they slowly dissipated amidst the screams of the crowd. Like life itself, fading away. I secretly turned to look at Gil by my side. She wore a bucket hat and a mask, fully armed to conceal herself. But in that moment, I could still clearly see the sparkle in her eyes, like there was still so much beauty left in her remaining life. As I lowered my gaze, suddenly someone tightly embraced me. My heart raced. I traveled with Gil for two months, sharing a room and sleeping on the same bed. Except for the night when she massaged my stomach in Changbai Mountain, there were no intimate gestures between us, not even holding hands. Sometimes I even felt that Gil was deliberately keeping her distance from me. But in this moment, I couldn't bring myself to push her away. She held me for a long time. The fireworks faded, the crowd dispersed. The staff started urging the visitors to leave. She let go of me. Her eyes remained clear and bright, just like when we first met. She tiptoed, threw the mask, and kissed my lips. She said, Stan, take good care of yourself from now on. I nodded, nodding as hard as I could. Tears kept swirling in my eyes. I couldn't say a word. I was afraid that if I opened my mouth, the defense line I had maintained for so many years would collapse in an instant. We returned to the hotel. I thought that after tonight, Gil and I would be over. We wouldn't have any regrets towards each other anymore. But before dawn the next day, Jill's phone started ringing incessantly, because she was trending on social media. Hashtag rising actress Gil suspected of cheating, innocent flower image shattered hash. Hashtag Gil seen on a romantic trip to Disneyland with a handsome man, passionate kissing involved hash. Hashtag Gil and Ivan break up hash. Gil received calls throughout the morning, and it seemed like a serious matter. In the afternoon, Jill's manager came to Shanghai. She glanced at me, her eyes filled with extreme disgust towards me. She and Gil discussed how to handle the situation in the room. As they talked, they started arguing. The manager spoke sternly, Gil, I can lift you up with my own hands, but I can also ruin you completely, leaving you with nothing. I don't care. Gil remained unmoved. The manager stormed out, angered. However, she returned in the evening. She said, I'll take him away first. No, you can't, Gil firmly refused. Gil, I want to leave, I spoke up. Gil stared at me intently. I kept my head down, afraid to look at her. I want to go back, Laura is still waiting for me. Do you think that our pictures being spread all over the internet haven't reached Laura's eyes? She questioned me. Before I could respond. She said firmly, I will handle it. 
I paused for a second. The manager became agitated. Handle it? How will you handle it? At that moment, Gil was about to argue with the manager again. I spoke, Gil, I don't need you to handle anything for me. I need to go back and explain to Laura. Jill's expression turned cold. For a moment, I felt like Gil wanted to strangle me. But in the end, she just coldly uttered, do whatever you want. After saying that, she turned around. I didn't look at her back, I only said to the manager, thank you for your help. The manager escorted me out through the hotel's back door. There was a chauffeur-driven car waiting there, and as I got in, I saw Ivan. The first thing he said when he looked at me was, Stan, what did you promise me back then? Chapter 11 When Gil and I broke up, I promised Ivan that I would never appear in front of Gil again. The three of us were high school classmates. Later, Gil and I both went to Beijing for university, and Ivan also got into Beijing. In Beijing, we met Laura. Laura fell in love with Ivan at first sight. In order to pursue him, Laura actively approached me. Laura had a good personality, and over time, we became close friends who could talk about anything. Eventually, I even asked Laura to help me leave Gil. Although Ivan was also a migrant worker in Beijing, his family was in business, and his parents had a wide network of connections. They were well off. Once he settled in Beijing, his parents bought him a house within the Third Ring Road. Even if he entered the entertainment industry, his family could pave the way for him. Such a background was completely different from Gil and me. Laura was better off, she was a native of Beijing, with a house and a Beijing household registration. Gil and I both came from poor families. My father was a gambler who lost everything, even selling my mother. When I was in 8th grade, my father was brutally killed because of his gambling debts. I was raised by my grandmother, and after I got into university, my grandmother passed away. Gil didn't have a father. After her father died in a car accident, her mother remarried and focused all her energy on rebuilding her new family, neglecting Gil. She lived like an orphan. For a long time, I believed that Gil and I could be together because we understood each other's unfortunate backgrounds. We wanted to warm each other with love. So for all these years, Ivan couldn't break into our relationship. Although he hinted at Gil many times. I've said it before, you will only hold Gil back. Ivan looked at me, angry when I didn't respond. Five years ago, Gil couldn't develop in the entertainment industry because of you. And now, five years later, is Gil going to repeat the same mistakes because of you? Ivan was right. If it weren't for me five years ago, Gil would have already made progress in the entertainment industry. She was discovered by talent scouts right after graduating, and entered the entertainment industry. She had her own struggles, but compared to other ordinary jobs, the entertainment industry was indeed an easier way to earn money. If we chose other regular jobs, we would never be able to afford a house in Beijing. But after signing with a talent agency, Gil received only minor and insignificant roles for a long time. At first, I always thought it was just bad luck for Gil. After all, with her face, a little bit of grooming and she would be a sensation. Later, I found out from Ivan that Gil got injured while filming, because I turned down many social events for her. Ironically, her face that I was so proud of became an obstacle to her career development. Many investors had ulterior motives when they saw her face, and once she refused, she would be maliciously suppressed. For the past two years, Gil had very little income, and in order to sustain our lives, she had to work as a high-risk stunt double for the lead actors on set. One mistake, and she fell from a two-meter high platform, nearly breaking her leg. That day at the hospital, Ivan slapped me, but then broke down and begged me to leave Gil. He said, if you just leave Gil, I will find the capital to promote her. With a platform, Gil can become a big star. How much money do you want to leave Gil? Name any amount, I'll give it to you, even if I have to go bankrupt. I asked him, do you only want to help her if I leave her? Ivan said firmly, I'm not that noble. I saw Gil lying on the hospital bed, covered in injuries. I remembered every time I went to the set, seeing Gil in a submissive position towards everyone, thinking back to all these years, the cold basement where Gil and I lived. She could really go much further, much, much further. I agreed. But I didn't ask for Ivan's money. However, in the end, Ivan still gave me one million. That one million actually saved my life during a certain period of time. Less than six months after leaving Gil, I was diagnosed with leukemia. Laura always thought I left Gil because of my illness. I didn't explain. 
I didn't want to shatter Ivan's image as a perfect man in Laura's eyes. Later on, I even felt somewhat grateful to Ivan. He truly made Jill's life better and better. Chapter 12 Is there any way to help Gil? I asked Ivan. I knew he wouldn't come to me without a reason. Last time he reached out to me, he had already planned everything, forcing me to leave Gil. This time was no different. He said, Stan, don't blame me. You've seen it yourself, you and Gil can never be together. Once the public sees Gil as someone who abandons others, her career will immediately collapse. And with that collapse comes various breaches of contract, some of which require hefty penalties. With all the contracts Gil has right now, she could be bankrupted, even heavily in debt. Just get to the point, I looked at Ivan, very calm. Ivan was straightforward too, you need to come forward and clarify that you are the one Gil spoke of, the one who abandoned her. Now that Gil is successful, you want to be back with her, but she rejected you. Out of resentment, you proposed a request for her to accompany you to Disneyland to watch the fireworks, and then never bother her again. Gil agreed, but you deceitfully kissed her, thinking you could win her back. Not only did Gil despise you, but it also turned into this terrible situation. Now Gil completely ignores you. You regret it, so you revealed the whole truth, hoping that everyone will believe Gil, that it's all your fault. As I listened to Ivan's words, I pondered for a long time. Is that all? We will handle the public relations and Jill's management company will take care of the rest. You just need to do this, Ivan said firmly, then added, don't worry, we won't mistreat you. Meaning, he will give me money again. All right, I agreed. Five years ago, there was no hesitation, let alone now when I'm dying. My only wish is that Gil can live well, very well. So the next morning, I recorded a video and posted it online. Once the video was released, it quickly climbed the trending list. Hashtag Jill's affair is her first love? First love voluntarily clarifies hash. Hashtag plot twist. Gil betrayed by first love. First love takes responsibility for all mistakes hash. Hashtag Ivan speaks up for Gil, resolutely believes in her hash. At that moment, I received a call from Gil. Who forced you to do this? Helen? Or Ivan? Gil angrily questioned. Helen was her manager. In the entertainment industry, she was known for being ruthless and using any means necessary to achieve her goals, a notorious female devil. I did it voluntarily. Why? Gil didn't believe it. What benefit do you gain from doing this? I received two million from your manager. Gil remained silent for a long time over there. I don't know what her current mood is. All I know is that my heartache has become numb. After a while, Jill's tone suddenly became eerily calm. She said, is my worth still only worth two million? Can't even lie? Your manager said that if this scandal breaks, you won't just lose two million, you'll be ruined. Why don't you believe me? People are all about reality. All I want is to publicly announce our relationship. My innocent image is still intact. I won't be ruined. The only one I have to apologize to is Ivan, but my management company will handle all of that. They won't abandon me. I'm making a lot of money now. Jill's voice trembled with a hint of sobbing. I clenched my lips tightly, unable to speak. By now, tears were streaming down my face as well. Why don't you believe me? It was the same back then, and it's the same now. Didn't I say I would handle it? Gil asked me, her voice breaking. I took a deep breath, my tone flat and indifferent, forget about me, I'm not worth it. Hey, she laughed. I don't know if she was mocking me or mocking herself. She said, Stan, in this lifetime, I deserve to be trampled on by you, over and over again. Chapter 13 Jill's negative news was quickly suppressed. Like a fleeting moment. There's no need to doubt the PR capabilities of the entertainment industry. Gil is still at the top. She and Ivan, this couple, are still the talk of the town. They appeared together on many love variety shows, went on trips together. They would visit each other's filming sets, go home and buy groceries together, always together. Occasionally, I would be pulled out by the media to play dead, not just to generate buzz, but more to highlight the relationship between Gil and Ivan. It's been half a year since I last went for a hospital checkup. The hospital called me a few times, but I ignored them. Until that morning when I woke up and saw blood all over the bedside. I was still startled. So, I went to the hospital. 
But my head was spinning too much, my body too weak, I had to seek help from Laura. Laura has been with me all along. But the moment she saw me, tears immediately welled up in her eyes. She said, Stan, how did you let yourself deteriorate like this? I didn't let myself deteriorate. It's the illness that has taken hold of me, something I can't control. In fact, I've been obediently eating properly. Laura took me to the hospital. The doctor scolded me. Told me to come for a checkup every month, but I didn't go. Now, things are worse, the condition is severe. Very severe. I asked her, how long do I have to live? The doctor didn't say anything. Laura was beside herself with worry. It's okay, I can accept it, I said calmly. One month, the doctor said softly, perhaps even less. My heart squeezed in pain. So, I only have one month left. When I was diagnosed with leukemia, I thought I was going to die. After holding on for so many years, I had already prepared myself for death. But now, at this moment, it's like I can't fully accept it. But I didn't cry. Laura suddenly burst into heartbreaking sobs beside me. The doctor at that moment didn't know if he was comforting me or comforting her. I held on to Laura and left the hospital. Actually, the doctor also suggested that I stay in the hospital, saying that just in case, there could still be a chance to save me. But then, what's the point of being saved just to wait for death? I think doctors can be quite humorous sometimes. I sat in Laura's car. Laura kept crying, her head resting on the steering wheel. Laura, can you please stop crying? I felt a bit helpless. Why do good people never get what they deserve? Stan, you're such a good man, why do you have to go through all this? Laura finally couldn't hold it in anymore and expressed her inner pain, is God blind? Maybe I did terrible things in my past life, so I'm not meant to have a good life in this one. But I believe that in my next life, I will be a very happy person. When Laura heard what I said, she cried even harder. All right, stop crying. Promise me you'll accompany me to see the land. Don't let me die without a proper resting place, I urged Laura. Laura wiped away her tears and nodded. I and Laura returned to my hometown. I actually don't like this city. All my childhood misfortunes happened in this city. The only thing I'm grateful for is meeting Gil in this city. Besides, fallen leaves must return to their roots. Laura and I traveled to many places. I fell in love with a piece of wilderness. That wilderness faced the sea, surrounded by tall reeds. It looked truly beautiful. Laura didn't like it much. It's so remote here, there's nothing around. Aren't you afraid? Have you ever heard of ghosts being afraid? In the future, you can come to visit me once a year. I like white chrysanthemums, I said, then suddenly realized that coming here from Beijing is quite far, so I changed my words, once every five years is fine too. I can endure loneliness the best. Laura's eyes turned red again. Chapter 14 I have chosen a burial site, and I don't plan on returning to Beijing. I don't have a home in Beijing, I've always rented a house. The landlord has been kind to me, and I don't want my death to affect her future rentals. Of course, I don't have a home here either. I have made up my mind to stay at the local hospital. Dying in the hospital won't affect anyone. However, after I pass away, I will trouble Lorda to come from Beijing to cremate me and bury my ashes in the place I've chosen. After I explained my arrangements to Laura, she didn't rush back to Beijing. She insisted on staying with me. I couldn't chase her away, so I let her accompany me to a place. It was a somewhat old community. Inside the community, there was a small playground. Many children were playing there. My gaze fell upon a little girl, around two or three years old. She was very brave and insisted on sliding down the slide by herself. The adult next to her was anxious. Listen, let grandma help you up the stairs. I can do it myself, grandma. You, you watch me play. The little girl pushed her away. She felt helpless and could only stand by to protect the little girl. The little girl played for a long time. Shall we go home? Later, grandpa, dad, and mom will come back, and we'll have dinner together. She gently coaxed her. But I want to play a little longer. We can play next time, all right? Okay. The little girl obediently nodded and coquettishly said, Grandma, I want a hug. She indulgently smiled, hugged the little girl, and left. When leaving, she seemed to glance back. Then she turned and walked away. I turned and walked away as well. Laura asked me, who was she? 
My mother. You have a mother? Laura was surprised. I didn't just pop out of a rock. I mean. It's no wonder Laura was surprised. For so many years, she hadn't seen any of my relatives. When I got sick, it was either just me or Laura. My mother doesn't even remember me anymore. After my gambler father sold her, she went through many inhumane tortures and became completely insane. When my father saw my mother going crazy, he kicked her out of the house. I still remember kneeling on the ground, begging my father not to drive my mother away. My father kicked me in the forehead, and blood splattered all over my face. There's still a scar on my forehead to this day, but I hide it with bangs. Fortunately, after my mother was kicked out, she encountered a good person who took her in and cared for her. Over time, my mother's mental state improved a lot, and they even formed a small family together, although she no longer remembers the past. It's better that she doesn't remember. If possible, I would also like to forget. Since you have a mother, why don't you? Laura suddenly realized something and asked me in astonishment. I know what she wanted to say, why don't I find my mother to be a bone marrow match? My mother doesn't even remember me. I don't want to disturb her life. Some lives are more bitter than life and death, like my mother's past. Besides, my mother didn't have any more children. The mother of that little girl is the child of that man and his deceased ex-wife. I only have hope in my mother. If the match fails, I would ruin her life. It's not worth it. Just seeing her live so well now is enough. Stan, you're truly too kind. Laura didn't know the whole story, but she still unexpectedly said those words. I smiled and explained, it's all for the sake of being happy in the next life. You fool, Laura scolded me. There's no such thing as a next life for humans. After living one life, it's just one life. Chapter 15 I still let Laura go back. She shouldn't give up her job for me. But I promised her that we would video chat every day. She's afraid that I'll quietly die like this. But I won't. I still need her to bury me in my favorite place. Before she left, she gathered up the courage to ask me, Stan, are you really going to keep hiding it from Gil? You told her? I became nervous all of a sudden. No, Laura quickly reassured me, I didn't. I calmed down and I realized that I had been too worked up earlier. I just feel. Laura seemed unsure how to say it, but she confessed, Gil called me. I looked at her in surprise. She didn't want me to tell you, but I didn't want to hide it from you, Laura spoke frankly, it was the day after you sent her the video to explain things after the incident with Ivan. She called me to explain. She said that there was nothing between you and her, that you hadn't done anything inappropriate. The kiss was just a goodbye, and you were even wearing a mask. She also emphasized that you loved me very much, and even with money as a temptation, you remained faithful to me. I listened silently. I didn't dare to imagine Jill's state of mind when she explained it to Laura. She clearly hated me so much, yet she still humbled herself to consider me. During this time, Gil and Ivan have been so open about their relationship. I can't help but feel that it's not just to give an explanation to the public, but also to purposely show me that there's nothing between you two, Laura sighed as she spoke. Tears also rolled down my cheeks uncontrollably. I said, Laura, that's why I have to keep it from Gil. Relationships are mutual. She considers me in every aspect, and so do I for her. Laura understood. She just felt sorry for our relationship with Gil. After Laura left, I was alone in this city. The only way to pass the time was to watch Jill's movies and TV shows. I watched all of her films and shows over and over again. The patient in the next bed couldn't help but sigh, I think I already like Gil enough. I feel embarrassed to say that I'm her die-hard fan in front of you. He didn't recognize that I was Jill's ex-boyfriend. After all, even I can hardly recognize myself now. One day, I was walking in the corridor and ran into Ivan. He was heavily armed, but I recognized him at first glance. He walked past me. Without recognizing me. Right? I told you that it's hard for people to recognize me now. I was sunbathing in the hospital garden, sitting in a chair, dozing off. Stan! I opened my eyes and looked at him. It's really you, he exclaimed in surprise. How did you become like this? I didn't answer him. I just looked around. Gil isn't here. I came back to see my mom. She's sick. If I hadn't gone to the hospital to check, I wouldn't have believed that you were Stan. He stared at me fiercely. 
He still seemed unable to believe it. How did this happen to you? You went to the hospital to check on me, so you should know about my condition, right? I replied calmly. Ivan silently acknowledged it. In the next moment, he suddenly became agitated again. Does Gil know? She doesn't. Is this the real reason you left her? Sort of. Ivan bit his lip and continued, the doctor said you only have a few days left to live. Yes. I won't tell Gil. I won't tell her that you're dying, Ivan said firmly. I know. Ivan turned and walked away. But in that moment, I glimpsed his eyes turning red, as if he was holding back tears. Chapter 16 The days of waiting for death passed slowly, yet they were fleeting. I'm finally going to die. As if sensing it, I am acutely aware that my time has come. I sent Laura a video, telling her that I couldn't go on. She dropped everything and rushed over. She came to see me for the last time. I said, Laura, I have some last words to say. She nodded, eagerly nodding. Okay, go ahead, I'll record it on my phone. I wanted to laugh. But I couldn't find the strength to do so. In truth, I didn't have much to say. I only had some money left. I had used up the one million Ivan gave me earlier, but I hadn't touched the two million he gave me later. I stored the money in two separate bank accounts. I gave one card to my mom, but I didn't want her to know it was from me. The other card, I told Laura to keep for herself. These years, thanks to her. I've been so lonely on my own. As Laura jotted down my words, she cried like a dog. Laura, I have one more wish, I said, my voice becoming very soft. Okay, I'll remember. I opened my mouth. I was so tired, so tired. I don't know if I managed to say it. If not, then so be it. Actually, it's not that important. I closed my eyes heavily. In that moment, I saw Gil, still a young girl. She was wearing a white dress, pure and clear. She sat in the seat next to me, shielding me from the glaring sunlight with her body. I was sleeping with my head on the desk. Her gentle voice whispered in my ears, Stan, sleep peacefully, I'll be here with you. A smile formed at the corner of my mouth. Gil! If there is a next life, I will surely cherish the time and not let you down. Prologue, Jill's Story Chapter 1 I haven't been back to my hometown in a long time. This time, I returned to that city because of a film shoot. I went to see my mother and my younger brother. They were polite to me. Regardless, I give them a substantial amount of money every month, so they wouldn't dare to show any displeasure. But without genuine affection, it's just empty. From the moment I left home, I could clearly sense their relief. I think I won't be coming back for a long time. Chapter 2 The last scene I filmed in my hometown was by the seaside. It was a remote location, but perfect for shooting outdoor scenes. While waiting for my scene, I decided to wander around to get into the right mindset. Suddenly, I caught sight of a small earthen mound. It stood there, all alone amidst the reeds. If it weren't for the withered bouquet of white chrysanthemums placed in front of the mound, I wouldn't have been sure it was a grave. After all, who would bury themselves here? It was far from any village or shop, making it difficult for future generations to come and pay their respects. But for some reason, the moment I saw that mound, a sharp, piercing pain struck my heart. It felt as if someone important was buried there. Or perhaps, it was due to the overwhelming loneliness of the grave that evoked a sense of pity within me? I couldn't discern the reason. All I knew was that my tears uncontrollably streamed down my face. Even after returning to Beijing, I often found myself thinking about it. Every time I did, a sharp, dense pain would surge in my chest. Chapter 3 University Reunion, and the class president insisted that I attend no matter what. She said that as a big star, I couldn't act like a diva, and she wanted to expose me. I casually asked, will Laura be there? She said she would. So, I decided to go. I thought if Laura was there, Stan would be there too. It's not that I haven't moved on from Stan. Well, okay, I don't want to deceive myself. I just wanted to see if Stan was doing well. If my presence had any impact on his relationship with Laura. But on the day of the reunion, I didn't see Stan, only Laura. After a few rounds of drinks, I asked Laura, where's Stan? Why isn't he here? 
She looked at me for a long time, then lowered her head without saying anything. I figured she still held some resentment towards me, so I didn't press further. When the reunion was ending, a stranger came to pick up Laura. They seemed intimate. Laura. Who is he? I couldn't help but question her. I am her husband, the man introduced himself. What do you mean? What about Stan? Did you break up with Stan? I couldn't believe it. Yes, we broke up. Laura looked at me, firmly and decisively. Why? Just because of me, because of that incident, but I explained to you. I nervously tried to explain. Yes, as a woman, do I not have the right to be bothered by that? She said with frustration. I slapped Laura across the face. She didn't retaliate. Many people came to restrain me, including Ivan. My appearance frightened him, and he stood there frozen, unable to react for a long time. Where did Stan go? I asked Laura. Laura didn't tell me. But after that, I couldn't help but think about Stan. I admitted defeat. No matter how much Stan hurt me, I couldn't forget him. I confessed to Ivan, I'm sorry, but I have to go find Stan. Before that, I will withdraw from the entertainment industry. I don't want anything to interfere with my relationship with Stan. This time, no matter what happens, I will never let go. Gil, after all these years, am I still inferior to Stan? Ivan asked me. We've been together for two years, and you won't even let me touch you. What makes me worse than him? I didn't answer. I couldn't find an answer. When you truly love someone, it's blind. Gil, are you sure you want to break up? He suddenly became calm. Perhaps, my heart had died. I'm sorry, I apologized. The answer was clear. He said, okay, we're breaking up. But you will never be with Stan in this lifetime. I looked at him. He smiled coldly, I'm not as great as Stan, so I'm going to tell you everything. I want you to regret it for the rest of your life. What are you talking about? Stan died a long time ago, almost two years ago, he said harshly. You didn't know, did you? He had leukemia many years ago, and because he couldn't find a matching bone marrow donor, he passed away without any hope two years ago. Yes, it was not long after his second departure from you. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. Ivan must be crazy, only a madman would spout such nonsense. He deliberately got together with Laura to not burden you, but the truth is, he only loved you from beginning to end. Gil, do you know what he looked like before he died? Emaciated, like a walking skeleton. Ivan kept talking. Ivan, that's enough. Not enough, he continued crazily, I want to tell you how miserable Stan was, how miserable he was for you, and how you didn't appreciate everything he sacrificed for you. Gil, what does it matter if you go find Stan now? You keep saying that Stan didn't trust you, but did you really trust him? If you truly trusted him, you wouldn't have believed that he would really abandon you. You wouldn't have been unaware of everything he did for you even after his death. Gil, you deserve this. I didn't want to hear another word from Ivan. I turned and walked away. I had to go find Stan. I had to see him with my own eyes. Chapter 4 I couldn't find Stan. Because Stan is really dead. Laura gave me Stan's death certificate and cremation documents. She took me to Stan's grave. I finally understood why I felt so sad when I saw that grave. Because Stan is buried here. All alone, by himself. Was he afraid that I would find him? So he hid himself in such a remote place. I don't know how I accepted Stan's death. Maybe I never really accepted it. How could I accept that Stan is gone? Ivan was right. I truly deserve this. I shouldn't have questioned Stan's love for me. I shouldn't have believed that Stan would actually leave me. During those years of separation, even if I had once looked into the reasons for Stan's departure, even if I had firmly believed in his love for me, even if I hadn't let go, I wouldn't have been so clueless, and my relationship with Stan wouldn't have turned out like this. Now I am suffering all the pain, all because I brought it upon myself. I became more and more confused day by day. Sometimes, I even have hallucinations. I would occasionally see Stan, right in front of me. But every time I try to embrace him, he disappears. 
Does he have to truly die for Stan to stop vanishing? I first had suicidal thoughts on my 32nd birthday, just as I was about to cut my wrist with a knife, I received a birthday greeting saying may time never betray you. He sent it every year without fail. And his birthday message never changed, Gil, happy birthday, live a long life. Live a long life? What's the point of living so long? But because of those words, I inexplicably gave up on suicide. Later on, every time I had thoughts of dying, I would look at the birthday greeting saying may time never betray you. Every year when I received his greeting, I would say to Stan, Stan, you see, I've lived another year. I kept repeating this, over and over. I lived until I was 78 years old. I really tried my best. I couldn't wait for the next birthday greeting from may time never betray you. So, for the first time, I actively responded to his message. I said, you don't need to send it next year. I said, thank you. Laura. After a long time, the response came, okay. I hung up the phone. Now, I can finally go and meet Stan with peace of mind.